Hey everyone. Recently I made some modifications to my Ender 3 V2. I purchased a direct drive extruder from BiQ. This is the BiQ H2 version 2.0. Uh, I also purchased a dual Z-axis lead screw kit from Amazon. And these two modifications are some upgrades that I've been wanting to do for a while now, but I thought they were a little bit out of my price range and I didn't think that um, it was absolutely necessary because I have 15 printers on my print farm and uh, at the time when I was thinking about making this upgrade the extruders were $100 and I think the dual z-axis kits were around $60 so times 16 printers 15 16 printers I just didn't want to make that modification but recently by Q they had a flash sale where I got these for $55 each and then the lead screw kit, the dual lead screw kit, I got it for $35. So I thought it was a great time to do the upgrade and I'm going to cover the reason why uh, I chose these, these two modifications and just what kind of improvements they're going to make to the print farm in general. Now for the extruder, I decided to go with the H2 because um, I have an Ender 6 that I've been testing for about six months now and a lot of users switched to the H2 design, the direct drive extruder, and I, I've had about six months of, uh, of uh, I guess, time to work with this extruder. And uh, this is kind of all I know. So when I saw that the price was $55 for this thing on Amazon, I'm sorry, on the BiQ website, I thought, you know what, why not? I, I like to keep things all the same because when you run a print farm you definitely want to keep all of your parts as consistent as possible because when you have too many different parts then then you kinda have to carry more spare different spare parts and it's just a pain in the ass to manage so uh, I really like the compact design of this extruder it weighs I think 219 grams or I think um, 219 or 209 oh it's actually 195 well with the fan it's probably a little bit more let me see here let me just put any fan there 225 and then with the back plate 250 grams which I guess it's really I don't know it's a little bit heavy but I've been printing with this for about a month now and it's great so um, yeah, I really love the design and the reason why I switched to the direct drive is because um, I, I recently started using Clipper and uh, using the pressure, the pressure advance, it, you really need to have precise control of the filament and when you have the Bowden style setup, there's a lot of uh, springing action, I guess, of the filament and it just... It just makes retractions a lot harder and it makes precise control a lot harder uh, for the extruder when it comes to controlling the filament. So upgrading to the direct drive just produces uh, better prints and then on top of that you can print different materials like the flexible materials and this has a titanium heat break and so that allows you to uh, be able to uh, print a, a, a much higher temperature so I think this is goes up to a hundred and two hundred and eighty degrees Celsius so you can print things like ABS and carbon fiber nylons and things like that so I thought it was a really great option to go with this one now for the back plate um, there were some designs that that were on Thingiverse and just all the other file sharing websites and I couldn't find something that I was totally happy with because there were a few things, there were a few features that I looked for in a bracket when it comes to having the ability to easily service your extruder. And uh, for starters, this this bracket is a remix of a remix. Uh, I watched Crosslink's video. He's a YouTuber, and he has some pretty good content. But he had a he had a video on the H2 extruder design. Or that he he designed a remix of a, of a backplate that somebody else had made. So I took his design and I remixed it again and I added this bracket. 
because on my Ender 6, I have that exact same bracket. Somebody designed this back plate, this uh, extruder mount, and they included this. And they had this clever design to input, to have a space where the, you can mount the circuit board for uh, the uh, input shaper the, to the accelerometer so you can measure the frequency and it can kind of tune those things out. So I thought that was a pretty clever design and I copied that and I I added it to Crosslink's Remix. And I also deepened the, the groove here so that you can run the wires a little bit better. And I also removed the, they had, there was a permanent BL touch mount here. And the reason why I removed that and I went with a different, a different style is because in my experience when running the Ender 6, uh, I've had to remove the two screws, pull off the fan and, and, and split the extruder in half and clean the gears out. And if you have a solid BL touch mount here, well, you're going to have to disassemble the extruder from the black plate and it would just be difficult to do. So I wanted to have the ability to to uh, disassemble the extruder while it's still mounted to the to the mount. This is secured by two screws up, up, up at the top and then uh, two screws in the back for the extruder and the back plate is uh, screwed in with the V-roller hardware and it's pretty pretty steady. I mean, it's really sturdy. I haven't had any issues. Um, so that's why I went with that design. Also, the fan, uh, one thing that I learned when using my Ender 6 was a lot of fan designs are in the front of the extruder. And I didn't like that because I like using the wheel so that I can feed my filament. So I found a pretty good design. Uh, I'll, I'll link everything in the description. But somebody came up with this clever design where you uh, feed it through the side and it blows on the nozzle perfectly. I put a, um, I did the water cup test and the air, excuse me, the airflow was really, um, there was a lot of airflow and it worked really well. So I like this design because it keeps the front free. You can use the wheel, you can change your nozzle easily. And then I'm also going to design a new um, mount for my uh, my dial gauge so that I could tram the bed and make sure all four corners are perfectly level. Now to talk about the uh, dual lead screw kit that I purchased on Amazon, this was another item that I've wanted to do for a while now and in my opinion the Ender 3's biggest downfall is its single lead screw design. So when I switched to the direct drive extruder, because it's a little bit heavier, um, I, I felt it was necessary to have this dual lead screw. And uh, I found it on eBay for 35 bucks. So I thought that was pretty cheap. It came with a new motor, a splitter cable, and uh, this additional bracket, some extra hardware and um, the extra lead screw. Now, I kind of came up with this myself. Well, I didn't come up with it myself, but I sourced these parts myself, which are the two pulleys. I think these are 20 millimeter pulleys and the belt, sorry, it's getting out of focus here. And this belt, and this belt keeps everything synchronized. So the, the gantry, the X gantry is always perfectly level. Uh, no matter how fast I'm printing or if this thing is just moving really fast, uh, the gantry is always going to stay put, the X gantry. Um, so I thought that was an important addition to make. I sourced these parts myself because they didn't come in the kit and I couldn't really find a kit for cheap. So I'm going to add these into the description as well. The way that I figured out the belt size was I used uh, on my packing material, on my boxes here, I have these, I used to work for UPS and we called them hub snakes, but um, basically I just wrapped them around here and then I measured, I measured the length of this and I got 610 millimeters. And that's what, that's what this belt is. 
610 2 GT and it's a six millimeter uh, wide belt so yeah these are the modifications that I made to this printer I haven't had a chance to do all of my printers um, I did some testing I installed the gyre software I had to readjust the uh, offsets because uh, because the way the extruder is it does it does go outside of the bed but that's okay I mean it's I don't ever fully take on the full build plate volume I thought about shifting the bed but uh, that's more trouble than it's worth so yeah that's the upgrades that I made to the Ender 3 um, feel free to leave me a comment uh, I know I just kind of put this video together I wanted to put it out there for you guys and just show you the reason why I went with uh, this setup on for the back plate and the fan and also the dual Z uh, kit from Amazon and the sync the synchronizing kit that I uh, pieced together and I'll put links in the description hopefully that helps you guys and uh, it gets your printer to the next level in terms of reliability and just uh, just just overall good quality output Alright guys, thanks for watching.